From battlefield to bomb shelter, from home front to hospital, from volunteer rosters to victims lists, women experience war in distinctive, gendered ways. These are their stories. These are their voices. Welcome to Voices of Women at Wartime, a podcast by the Center for Women's Justice in Israel. I'm Rachel Stomel. Sadly, my co-host, Rif Lubitsch, is not here with us today because she's sitting shiva for her mother, Carol Liebman of Blessed Memory. And we hope that Rifka and her family can find comfort at this difficult time. So the war's been stretching on for over two and a half months now, and we're all coping or not coping in our own ways. In episode five with Yali Yali, we talked about some of the volunteer efforts people are organizing. And in episode four, we shared the very powerful words of Atar Katzmaur, who was a survivor of Kibbutz Be'eri, and who used her writing as a way to process and share the harrowing experience of hiding with her children in a closet while terrorists hunted them down. And if you haven't already, definitely go have a listen to that. I know people who are immersing themselves in the news all the time, and I know people who are purposely avoiding the news. I have friends who are turning to art and to other forms of creative expression. And then there are those of us who are turning to our refrigerators and our junk food cabinets. So like I said, we all cope in different ways. But today I want to focus on one way of coping that I think is a particularly Jewish way of coping, and that is through humor. So Jews are really funny people. We're also, historically speaking, really traumatized people. We've been persecuted in every context imaginable, and we've survived a lot, but there's also a lot we haven't survived. And that's no laughing matter. So why are we, well, laughing? Especially now, especially during a terrible war that was foisted on us after the deadliest massacre we've experienced since the Holocaust. So today we're going to be talking to Bazi Rubin, who since the start of the war has been putting out some really funny videos on the internet. Bazi is holding down the fort at home while her husband is off fighting in the reserves. And her videos showcase her daily life as a mom on the home front with all the hilarity and the realness that that entails. So, Bazi, thanks for coming on the show. Thank you for having me. Tell me about how all this happened. Why did you start making these funny videos? I was really lost at the beginning of the war. Uh, My husband was called up on Silchat Torah with everyone else, and I was suddenly alone with four children, (laughs) four loud, noisy children. And it was, it was, um, I was just really lost. I had no idea what I do. I can't. I can't go out and uh, make barbecues for the soldiers, and I can't really go fundraise money for different causes. Someone came over and said, we're donating towels to soldiers. And I I was like, oh, I have a towel. You know, and like that felt that felt so small, so ridiculous. And I was I was really looking for something that I could do and and saying, oh, just be at home with your kids didn't feel enough for me. And I was looking for a place for like creative expression, I guess. And um, and I was just trying to think like, what could I do? What could I do? What could I do? And I spent the first week and a half just walking around going, what could I do while I'm changing diapers and diapers? I had two in diapers at the time. One of them is finally over it. Um, hey. so now we're down to one in diapers, but I was just, I was literally at the beginning, the kids were all home. So I'm changing you know, 12 diapers a day and thinking, what can I do? And while I was changing diapers, I started thinking about, well, there's so many things I want to say. There's so much, there's so much that we need to hold on to right now. Um, and, and I knew that everyone around me was feeling really, really lost. Um, in my neighborhood alone, there are over 70 women whose husbands have been called up. Wow. So multiply that with the amount of kids that are here. It's just, we were all very, very lost. Um, so I started filming ridiculous videos about how it's really great that everyone's donating and supporting the soldiers and sending them food, but we need help here at home with the diaper changing. It really smells bad. And that was how I- It's not in your first video that you're- That's how I got started. Wiping, you know, someone's butt while you're filming the video. (laughs) I mean, you know, trying to figure out the right angle so they don't actually see what I'm doing, but they see what I'm doing. And yeah, I just, I made a few neighbors laugh and I was like, okay, well, maybe we need to do this. You said that you made the neighbors laugh. So what kind of reactions have you gotten from people after you put out these videos? You know, it's been um, it's been a really heartwarming and humbling experience. People reach out to me daily. At the beginning, I was putting out two videos a day. And not all of them were funny. 
some of them are just very real. Um, and, and people just kept reaching out and saying, thank you. You're the only person I'm following right now on social media because I can't handle any of the other things going on. I, myself, I'm not on social media. I like post my videos and I run away and people were calling me, people were WhatsApping me, people were telling me my daughter is in the same situation as you and she's all alone and this is giving her like a breath of fresh air. So thank you. Um, and I realized that it's not only about making people laugh, it's about people understanding that they're not alone and that we're all kind of going through this experience together. And for me to get all that feedback is just incredible and it makes me feel less alone because I know that what I'm doing is is resonating with other people um, and that gives me strength. You're also a medical clown. I know that you're no stranger to the therapeutic benefits of humor also. So tell me a bit about that. Sure. I've been trying to incorporate that into my life always. And um, when I was doing Shiloh Kill Me, when I was in the uh, doing national service, I chose to go to a course and study to become a medical clown in addition to my volunteering. And it became a part of me. It's not something that I, I get to do in hospitals nowadays because it's just too complicated with children, but it's it's something that I incorporate into everything I do. And I think that it's um, it's the best way to live. It's the only way to live. It really does help heal. So now instead of using those same skills for, I guess, helping you know patients in the hospital, whatever, we're using it for anyone who's watching your videos and also for yourself. Yes. It's been super cathartic what I'm doing, 100%. Yeah. And also, I know since the start of the war, I mean, since forever, but also especially since the start of the war, there's been so many memes going around and, you know, war jokes, which sounds like it should be an oxymoron, but it's definitely not. It works somehow. I think also something that's very Israeli, like we know that Jews are very funny, but there's something about Israeli Jewish humor and particularly Israeli Jewish black humor that I think is unique. So why do you think that Israelis are so connected and so into black humor? Well, it's a survival mechanism. It's something we need. I'm not really into, I don't do like heavy black humor. I do light black humor. <laughs> right. Um, but but we need this. I, I was at a shear this morning, like right before this, we were talking about Simchat Sayim. We, we thrive when we have this joy of life. And when you have terrible things happening around you, it's very hard to focus on regular joyful things. But if you're able to look at a terrible situation and find something within that that can make us laugh, then I don't know. I don't know a better way to do it. You know, I don't I don't. People keep saying to me, wow, your videos, you're so funny. And I'm like, what do you want? I could laugh or I could cry. I choose to or laugh. Both. Both. I could do both. A hundred percent. But I choose to have it come out through laughter because it just it's the only way to move forward. It's the only way to move forward. Yeah, for sure. Also, the thing with like with humor is that it's necessarily a social thing. It's relational. I mean, being funny is about the feelings that you evoke in someone else. So do you feel like humor is helping us also feel less isolated in a way that other mediums can't really do? 100%. I think this humor is relatable. And I think this humor is is like really hitting home for so many people in a way that reading other things that are not funny could kind of hurt us but when we're laughing about it together so it it hits home in a way that we're we're able to sit with it for a bit we're able to say okay we're in a really bad situation um but you know what we're okay we're okay and that's what we have to keep telling ourselves i think humor also like it kind of bypasses the logical part of your mind and like the intellectual the part that's like you know focused on anxiety and thinking 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 and it just goes straight to like how you feel or the straight like the connection with someone else. Because humor basically is like when everyone agrees that a certain thing is true and then you subvert it and like you change it and you're like, oh, my gosh, that's funny. Like it makes us laugh for some reason, which also is the same thing that makes us like be really scared. You know, like my kid, I think his first like joke that he made, he was like, you know, one or something. And he took like a shoe when he put it on his head and he said, hat. And then he laughed because like. He knows it's not a hat. I know it's not a hat. But he's like, look, I did this thing and it's wrong. But I did that intentionally wrong and it's funny. And like the same thing that makes us feel unsettled when like things don't go the way that we want and that scares us. That's also what makes us laugh. It's kind of like taking the same parts of you that are freaking out, but 
I guess, in a controlled way, making them feel predictable and funny and making us feel good about it. It's taking the, it's taking the things that make sense, but highlighting the ridiculous. That's, yeah. that's and that it's end. okay that it's ridiculous. And it has to be. Listen, most of my videos, I start off very serious. There was one that I was talking about, you know, there's a certain population that has been overlooked in this war and it's really, really hard for them and they, and they can't handle things. This is how I start out. Very serious, very rational, right? And then I talk about people who don't drink coffee and I'm one of those people. And I just, this war has been so ridiculously hard because I'm tired and I can't get that caffeine kick that everyone keeps talking about. So like you took something that was serious, something emotional, gut-wrenching, you turned it into something absolutely ridiculous. That's where we find our humor. And that's what we're able to say, oh, you're right. There are some serious people here who need a lot of our help, right? So taking it to that place that makes us able to smile. Yeah. So also something that stood out for me in your videos is that they're very human and real. And they're also very tied to the experience of being a woman. Like there's a lot of humor out there, but like yours is very like, woman specific and mother specific and so even though my husband isn't off fighting and i'm not a miluima as you've called it which is a mix of the word miluim which is reserves and ima which is mother i'm at home juggling kids and war and work and pregnancy of twins and even though i've never met you i feel like you see my chaos it's like you know namaste means like the divine in me sees the divine in you so i feel like your videos are like the chaos in me see the chaos in you we should, and it's like we should not... find that we should find a word for that for sure the we need anti namaste the chaos day the chaos day Ooh, I like and it. it's not just like any kind of chaos it's the specific chaos of being a mom and being a woman on the home front during a war so why do you think that mom humor is so important these days and why it's different than the other kind of you know war humor that's going around i think there's just a very big population of people who are not fighting and are feeling chaos in their lives. And my videos are mostly watched by women, but not just. And I know that that women who don't have small children at home are finding finding a lot of simcha in my videos. Um, and I think that it's just about everyone else. You know, we're expected to move on with our lives and we're expected to function as much as possible. And even though everybody's very understanding about this situation, we're not supposed to shut down, but we're not able to fight actively. We're not able to protect actively. Um, and we're feeling chaos. At the beginning of the war, I was like, okay, clearly I've developed ADHD. Or maybe it's something else. I, I've got brain fog and I'm not able to function. I'm not able to think of, you know, there's all these things going, chaos, mamash, chaos. And everyone's feeling that. And so I think that's what makes it so, so relatable. And I think that a lot of moms out there feel that whether their husbands are on reserve or not. If my husband was just at work and I'm dealing with the same things, it's not very different in some ways. And I think that also is is hard to to grasp. We're in the middle of a war and yet we're still changing diapers and we're still making food and we're still shopping and cleaning and breaking up fights between our kids. Like how does that make sense in a world that is completely upside down? So Especially in the first month when there was no gone and no school and there was no kindergarten and no school. So the little kids and what are we supposed to do? Everyone's supposed to continue with their lives. And, you know, also as a mom, you think like, oh, I want to maintain stability for my kids and I want to try yes. to be on top of everything. And it's not realistic, really. So I think part of like what your videos show and help us realize is that like it's OK to feel inadequate. It's OK to feel like we're not on top of things and that other people feel like that too and it's not a cop-out it's just life it is yeah it is exactly where we're supposed to be also i'd be very yeah. concerned if i was able to keep everything together and everything was great because that doesn't make sense to me and yeah. i think that on social media we see so much fake we see so much fake so to be able to see something that is real and validating is extremely powerful yeah for sure Even if that means i show you my very very messy kitchen you know well, mine is immaculate. <laughs> well, I can't. I'm good. Really, I'm good. Yeah. I believe you. Sorry. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Take my word for it. I think this podcast has no video, just audio. So you'll all have to believe me. <laughs> See, that's the beauty of Zoom. We blur everything out. Yes. Yeah. So thank you so much, Bazi, for coming on the podcast and sharing your insights and your humor with us. We've covered some heavy topics over the course of this podcast series. And it's so important to remember that we're living through this war with our entire selves, not just 
our traumas and our fears, and not just with our heroism and our activism, but with our humanity and with our joy. So thanks, Bazi, for reminding us of that. My pleasure. Keep laughing. (laughs) I also want to thank our listeners for tuning in today. By listening to this podcast and by giving women's voices your attention, you give them power. If you, like us, agree that women's perspectives are essential to the Israeli narrative, subscribe to the Voices of Women at Wartime wherever you get your podcasts and encourage your friends to listen and subscribe too. If you have thoughts, questions, or comments, we'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to us on social media, on the Center for Women's Justice page, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or whatever. We're also going to be putting here in the comments some links to Bazi's videos that you can watch on Facebook or Instagram. Thank you so much, Rabbi Scott Kahn, for the recording and editing. I'm Rachel Stomel. Be well and stay safe. <laughs>